Hey, everybody. Welcome back to the Imperfect Adventure. Um, so it's the beginning of the month, and I have decided that our theme this month will be relational health. So when I talk about that in my coaching practice, what that means for me, at least, is what's going on with my relationships. Um, and, you know, sometimes this is a little bit like this is a little bit scary for me too. We've all got stuff, um, baggage in our relationships. Well, I shouldn't make assumptions. I mean, maybe you are completely, all of your relationships are fantastic and you have no issues with them and you have really good boundaries and the people that you inter interact with have really good boundaries and everybody has done the work. <laughs> um, and I'm only laughing because wow. Wouldn't that be fantastic? And you may be in that place. And I hope that you are. For me, what I found in relationships is that they are, it's, it's work, it's continual work. And I remember, um, I remember my mom when I was getting married, this is one of the most profound things my mom ever said to me, um, was, you know, when you're dating someone, you have bad days. And when you're, you marry someone, you can have bad years. And what really makes the difference is sort of the hanging in there during the extended bad times um, that you may not have the perseverance for endurance for when you're dating, right? That you just kind of need to hang in there. Um, and I would say like that really, really stuck with me. And it's been absolutely true in my marriage. And it's also been true as a parent. It's been true in friendships. It's been true in family relationships. Um, and I also want to say I am not a relationship expert and I definitely do not have this all figured out. Um, but I do know and research supports just how important having support systems in our life are. And that's the way I see relationships, right? You've got levels of support in your life. So you may have a spouse, you may have, you know, then you have like your parents or your children, like depending on your age. Um, you've also got like a layer of support from your extended family and a layer of support from, you know, your best friend or really, really in close knit friendships. And then you've got sort of, this like ever expanding circle that may be acquaintances or coworkers or, you know, and there may, may be some people, you know, maybe you're closer with your best friend than you are with your family, right? Like, you know, people can kind of come and go within those concentric circles. That's the way I visualize it is they're you in the center and then like concentric circles kind of working its way out really creates the support that we all need to function in our lives. Um, and so, you know, what are the relationships that are important to you? What kind of support do they provide for you? Um, and what I've experienced in my life is that um, it's been ever fluctuating. And, you know, when when I was newly married, I needed different support than when I was a new mom. Um, and I needed during that like new mom time, I needed other mom friends that could kind of help me out with my kids. Like, could you do a play date? I need a break or I've got to go to work. You know, could you help me with this? Um, kind of the, I had those friends that I could just like drop my kids off last minute, you know, like crisis kind of partners and stuff through that. And I'm so grateful for them in my life. Um, you know, now at the stage of life where I am now, um, almost 50, it's kind of weird to say that, but almost 50, you know, I don't necessarily need as much help with my kids, like somebody to watch my kids. My kids are adults and teenagers, so there's independence for them. Um, but I find that I kind of crave a different type of support for me as a as a person, you know, as an entrepreneur, as somebody who is, you know, kind of reinventing herself a little bit and not a little bit in a lot of ways that I need different types of support. Um, and one question that I ask in my coaching that I think was very powerful for me, and this is why I ask it of my clients, because I feel it can be really important um, and really reflective when you're kind of reflecting on the relationships around you is do your relationships, the ones you currently have, all of them, do they help or hinder your growth as a person? So are you able to grow within the context of your support systems? 
You know, are the people you surround yourself with very open to your growth and you changing? You know, there's one thing with people, we really don't stay the same. We do definitely change over time. People will say like, oh, they're never going to change. You know, there's certain things about us that are like our innate personalities or, you know, the things that we go to, but we do change. Humans change and we get interested in things, different things, and we learn different things. And if you are in a growth mindset, if you want to grow, if you want to um, sort of become more of who you are, it's not necessarily moving away from who you are but become more of who you are. Can you do that in the relationships that you currently have now? Um, and what's going on with boundaries? What's going on with your own boundaries? Um, I have found in my practice as well that women, a lot of women really struggle with boundaries. Um, one thing that I hear a lot is I've taken care of everybody else. You know, I've done all these things for everybody else all these years. Like, I don't even know what I want. Um, or am I allowed to even want it? And how do I, how do I set up boundaries to kind of go after what it is that I want or even explore those options? And so much of boundaries, when you've, when you've switched the boundaries on somebody, um, sometimes people can really act out like, wait, mom, you used to always do X, Y, Z. Why are you not doing it anymore? You know, or honey, like you've always, done blah, 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 you know, these things in the home or at work or whatever, like now you're switching it up on me. It can feel very disconcerting, um, to people in your life. If you're all of a sudden switching up the boundaries, but especially if you haven't had any boundaries before and boundaries can be learned and boundaries are not meant to be mean. Like, it's not about, I'm not going to help you. I'm not going to take care of you. I'm not going to be present in your life anymore because I have to focus on me. Like that's not to me, at least that's not a boundary. The boundary is I'm important too. like me, myself, my decisions, my person, I, my wants, my desires, my needs are just as important as yours. And so how can we compromise, you know, within our family or within our friendship or within our marriage or whatever, so that everybody's needs are met versus it being you or me, like, can it be? And, and I, I believe it absolutely can be when you're looking at compromise. Um, but boundaries can be really difficult for people to instill if they've never done that before. I will say that I am, oh gosh, I don't know if this is the right term, but maybe over boundaried. Like I have a lot of boundaries. <laughs> Some of that is because I'm an Enneagram eight. That's just kind of what we're good at. I don't like blurred lines and boundaries. Um, I typically don't let people take advantage of me. I'll, I will cut that off like super fast. Sometimes I cut things off too much. Um, so I've had to learn and I'm still learning how to navigate that. Um, but so boundaries never were really difficult for me to set up. They are sometimes hard to kind of tear down. Um, where there are people that have a very difficult time putting up any type of boundary. Um, and so they're kind of, they kind of get walked all over. Like think of the boundaries. I always look at it as like a fence around yourself, right? Like there's some people that you open the gate for, right? There's a gate and you open the gate for them. Some people live inside the boundary of your heart. Other people live outside, but you'll open it. You know, other people, you kind of don't, you can choose not to let in, right? Um, that's the choice that you make for your own relational health. Um, you know, I was trying to look up, cause this is one of the questions that I had, um, when I think about relationships is like, how many people, actual people do you really need, um, in your life? And what does, you know, what does the research say around that? Um, and I, I looked it up a little bit. It wasn't as compelling as I wanted it to be, but have you heard like, um, the concept of like, you only need like one really close best friend, you know, that research, like that makes you live longer and you're happier and that kind of stuff. Um, and so I've heard that over the years. And I think that the number probably doesn't matter, but the depth of those relationships really matter. So, you know, are there people that you can be vulnerable with? Are there people that will, will cheer you on as you're growing or changing? Are there people that you can really depend on for things? You know, there's people that you can call in the middle of the night, no questions asked. I'm here for you. How can I help you? Um, you know, and you may only need one of that, one of those people in your life. And you may be somebody who needs more than that. 
Um, I think it, from what I've, my observation of my own life and people's lives is it really depends on, it's a lot more to do with like personality than anything else. Um, but I'm sure that there's way more intelligent people who can have this conversation <laughs> than me. This is just what I see, um, that it really comes down to like the quality of support that you have in your night, in your life, not necessarily the quantity. Um, and I have had, you know, through my own life, I have had a lot of support, like a lot, like a quantity, a large quantity of people. Um, when my kids were younger and lots of neighbors and lots of, you know, friends, my kids, friends, parents, you know, and like, um, sports teams that they were on or that kind of thing where like the support felt really a lot, like there was a big quantity, but the relationships weren't as deep. And then as we moved out of those things, sort of the, the quantity dwindled, but then the depth really came in like the quality, the quality, sorry, I can't talk quality of my relationships got even more like deeper and deeper and deeper, um, which I've learned about myself is actually what I prefer. Um, I'm definitely a like small circle, let's go deep type of individual where I think there are some people who are like lots of lots, quantity, quantity matters, lots of friends, lots of people that they hang out with. I don't know. Cause I'm not that person. I don't know how deep those relationships are. Um, and they might be really, really deep. I mean, you might have like 10 best friends from high school that you've been best friends forever. And your relationships are really deep. Like, I don't know. I can only talk about my experience. Um, but I know for me and, and me under, I think, What's really, really been helpful for me is understanding that about myself, because when I think about friends, friendships, um, and my support system, I think I was very, for much of my life, like early 20 teenagers, or early twenties, I was trying to do the quantity thing, you know, be part of like the, the circle. You always want to be like in the circle, inside the circle. And I kind of never was. And well, not that I never was, I was, I would be in the circle for a little bit of time. And then I would kind of like pull myself out of it. Sort of like I'd be over the drama or whatever. Um, and now I realize that's because I really wanted quality. I really wanted like a depth of relationship that not, you're not, me, I'm not meant to go deep with a lot of people. And so recognizing that about myself, like what I need and what I don't need has been really, really pivotal for me. Um, so that I can choose to really invest in a small number of close relationships versus being exhausted. Cause of what would happen. I'd be exhausted investing in a lot of relationships that all felt very surface and very shallow. That is not to say that the people that I was in relationship with were shallow. They were not shallow individuals. It was just really hard for me to be as deep as I wanted to be with a lot of people. Um, and so it's just been um, very helpful for me to understand and explore what it is that I really need out of my relationships. Um, and there are definitely, there are times in my life where I feel like, wow, my circle's really small. Like, do I want it to be this small? <laughs> like, you know, um, it's probably really small right now, just given um, some family health issues that have been going on. It's just been really hard to um, even maintain kind of what I do have. Like, it's just, it's, I'm, I've kind of been in this little, um, vacuum within my family, but, um, but that will subside and, and life will return, you know, um, to a little bit more uh, will allow for a little bit more activity and socialization and that kind of stuff. But, um, you know, but overall understanding that about myself, it's, I'm not, I used to think there was something wrong with me. Like I used to think that like, oh my gosh, like all these people have a million friends. Like, why don't I, and you know, why am I always kind of in between? I was like in between circles of friends. I was never like in this one friend group all the time. It was like, I was friends with some people from here and some people from this group and some people from that group. And now I know why. Now it makes a lot of sense why just sort of what I naturally gravitated towards, but especially as a teenager, when all that matters is your peers 
you know, I didn't understand why I sort of felt like I was on the outside of a lot of these circles as opposed to on the inside, because what I was really looking for was depth, not quantity. And, um, I didn't truly understand that about myself like I do now. And so that's been really helpful to explore that. And so I would just encourage you with some of the, some of the questions, you know, do your relationships health or hinder your growth? How are you feeling about boundaries? Are there some boundaries you need to put up? Um, and how many people, how much support do you really feel like you need? I think this is a very individual conversation that can happen. And what would feel good to me would maybe not feel good to you. Um, and so I hope that this just kind of spurred on a conversation in your own mind um, about how to, what to think about relationships. And, you know, relationships are just never, not I mean, maybe, maybe I shouldn't use the word never. I don't know, but they're hard. People are hard. Relationship stuff happens. Like you say that something you don't mean, or your husband, you know, you and your husband get in an argument or like whatever, like stuff happens, life happens. Um, so it is definitely a fluid thing, but relationships really matter to overall health. And so it's important to, to think these things through. Um, the rest of the month, I'm going to be talking about um, siblings. Um, I'm going to be, I have to be careful because this is my podcast, not my relationships podcast, right? So I am not going to sit here and um, air like anybody's dirty laundry, like in my family or my relationships at all. Um, I, so I'm just going to take it from like a, my perspective. So I'm going to talk about siblings, but I'm actually going to talk about um, my kids, like what I hope for them in their sibling relationship. I am going to be interviewing a friend of mine who's also a special needs mom um, and sort of what friendships look like within that context. Um, and then talk a little bit about family relationships as well. Kind of dig into my, my own, like my family, my nuclear family, my husband, my children, that kind of thing. Um, and just sort of my hopes in that space. And so I hope this is helpful to you. I would love, love, love to hear your perspective on relationships because I can only really know what I know from my own life. Um, and so if you please, if you have, you know, some thoughts on it or something, please go ahead and message me, or you can find me in the Facebook group, um, called the imperfect adventure. Um, you can join that community at any time and you can just share your thoughts with me. I would really love to hear it. And I'm going to leave you with um, a little quote from one of my favorites, Brene Brown, because she talks a lot about belonging and relationships and boundaries and vulnerability. And this is, um, I just felt like it was a really good quote from one of her books. So she says, one of the greatest barriers to connection is the cultural importance we place on going it alone. Somehow we've come to equate success with not needing anyone. Many of us are willing to extend a helping hand, but we're very reluctant to reach out for help when we need it ourselves. It's as if we've divided the world into, quote, those who offer help and, quote, those who need help. The truth is that we are both. And I find that so incredibly true. And in relationships, there's this give and take, right? That um, what I found, right? Sometimes I need help from like my husband or my kids or my friends. And sometimes I'm able to give help to those same people. And that's really where deep connection comes. And I know for me that that's what I've been looking like, looking for in my life is that deep connection. So um, anyway, I hope that was helpful to you. If you want to dig deeper into relationships and boundaries and all that stuff, Brene Brown is always, always a great starting point. Um, and if you really want to dig into how relationships affect health and kind of adjusting those things in your life, I am happy to chat with you um, about the work I do as a nurse coach. So anyway, hope you enjoyed this episode and I will see you next time. Bye.